Hello there, this is Rom Wills coming back at you with yet another car video. Players are good at reading women. Players are good at reading women and everything. And hey, it uh, touched on this a little bit yesterday and uh, shouted out um, the master, Alan Roger Curry. May he rest in peace. Because one thing with Mo one, he and he said this a couple times, and I don't know why people didn't pick up on it, but he said he could read women real well. You know? He could read women real well. And um, you know, apologies if I'm getting this wrong, because I know he's in the spirit realm probably like, get it right, Ron, get it right. You know, if you don't, you know, you're gonna get a dog face here. And anyway, he was he said it a few times. He's very good at reading women. I mean, some I don't know why somebody didn't put that together. Some people think Mo One is just approach it, approach, approach, but you know, he could read a woman and know what she could do, what he could do with her, what he, what what level of uh, Mo One he could do. And really, any real player, any real player now, and that not some fake me out play or somebody who just playing a pure numbers game, but a real player, somebody who's real successful. They're very good at reading a woman. You notice with uh, like players and pimps. Let me shout out the honorable pimp guy because I talked about the time I was recording something like one of his Mac lessons over his place, and I just happened to show him some women in my phone. And these are women I never talked about. He ain't never seen them before, but he was accurately accurately giving readings on women I never talked to him about before, just off their picture. And that's one thing players can do. Like myself, I say I, I can't read them just off of a picture. I gotta, I gotta see them a bit first myself, or be around them. But he could actually just read them right off the picture. But any player can really do that. Now they might not use any terms on stuff, and they might not break them down like I do. But they can just look at a woman, and know pretty much, all right, her, not her, and everything. Like I talked about tribes. Like, I, what I say for tribes, I say, look, just pay attention to everything about a woman that uh, the ones that reject you, ones that uh, the ones that reject you, the ones that don't reject you, the ones that make it easy, the ones that make it hard. You'll start noticing patterns, you know, you'll start noticing patterns. Like if a woman got a fat round ass, she's actually friendly to me. But when a woman becomes top heavy or something, or she don't got that ass on her, eh, so so, so so, gotta work a bit, gotta work a bit, you know, or big legs or something, right? So it's like a certain type of woman, and then certain social classes and everything. It depends on the social class. It depends on a lot of stuff, and that's the thing to remember when you're dealing with women. You know, you got to figure out, okay, what is it about them? Well, you just stay in there, dude. I'd have been across the street by now. You know, you actually going to walk across the light about to turn around. You better walk a little faster, motherfucker. Shit. And I asked my mom, huh? Damn. <laughs> but, no, nah, that's the thing. Because when you're in, when you're reading a woman... You ain't just saying, oh, she got big breasts or fat ass. You looking at other stuff because a true player, like a player wouldn't argue with me when I say there's differences. There's differences between women. Because they can pick up on a ratchet. They can pick up on a ratchet. They can pick up on uh, whatever. You know, ratchet, upper class woman. I was just checking out a woman I follow on uh, IG. She's talking about bougie girls. Yeah, she's very bougie. She got zero tattoos. Don't look like she's been near hood. Even though she says she currently lives in one. But I think that's just the place she can find. But you look at her and when I met her in person, very, very bougie. More upper class and everything. Upper middle class. But contrast that with some woman who got a hardness to her. Got a ton of tattoos. And I, I met them all. That's why I say it's a difference. That's why I, um, I talk about class and stuff. Because you got to know, okay, what class you are. And then 
what class the woman is because different women going to have different classes. In fact, I think I might do a, I was going to do it last month. I'll probably do a on demand on reading women as far as their class. Yeah, it's not quite the same as Master Teacher BGS as he got the master system, but I have my own system of reading women according to their social class and everything because it tells you a lot. Also, how you could approach them. Like, if you're going to approach, like, working class or lower class women, you got to be mode one or you got to be, like, direct. You can't be, like, and you, you can go up to them and say, hey, you fine and all of that. Let's just let them know what the deal is. Because trust me, they reading you. But then if you're dealing with a more, uh, say, an upper class woman, more bougie, bourgeois, and that really cuts across races because you got plenty of white girls on that shit. You know, because those bourgeois ones, shit, they about the lifestyle. They want to go to that fancy restaurant. They the type, they'll go and count. Uh, what the fuck is this? Oh, okay. Man, they putting up stuff to this shit. All type of other shit. Type of cars that are usually stolen. Okay, whatever. No, that's nice though. But anyway, nah, but if uh getting back to uh what I was saying though, you know, if you're dealing with more upper class woman, she looking at you, first of all, she looking at you for signs of can do you live that lifestyle? That's why you got situations where that's part of the reason why you get some educated women don't want to deal with a blue collar man. I've got nothing to do with the money. And they'll say stuff like money and uh, they'll say stuff like, oh, we can't have a conversation. That's some bullshit. They don't fit their lifestyle. They're looking for a certain look. They're looking for a man who fits into their lifestyle publicly. Now, if they think you find otherwise sexy, yeah, they'll deal with you on the level. But, you know, you got to act like you don't know when you get out in public. And that's with every class where they work everything because understand something with women. They actually look more for their reflection. See, we don't care as men. Shit, she, she got that nice body, whatever. We don't care. You can get a billionaire who could marry that woman who work fries at a local restaurant. We don't give a fuck. She, you, don't, you don't need her for money or anything. You just need her to be fine. A lot of women know that. But when you talk about like different lifestyles and everything, what you want to do, shit, they looking at it. Shoot, that's why some women might reject a uh, upper class guy. Because you got a lot of men complaining about men going for Pookie and Ray Ray. That's in the black community. I don't know what terms they use in the white community. But I've heard some stuff said. They, shoot, some of the women who going to go for that guy, that's their class. That's a reflection of them. Like a woman who like a Pookie and Ray Ray. You know, she, she likes a more working class or a lower class looking guy. But that says something about her. But then you get some of those women, you know, talking about like uh, doing some bougie ass shit. And I actually looked that up. Like I said, that goes across races. I looked that up. Uh, did a search on that on IG. There are plenty of white girls coming up, black and white girls. You know, there's a certain look. You know, a certain style and everything. But as a man, you reading all that. You reading, okay? First read, all right. Yeah, she fine. First is, like, is she usually in your uh, tribe? You know, as far as body. But even then, okay, what's your social class? What's hers? That's going to make a big difference. Because getting back to, like, some of those women who are more working class or lower class, shoot. A lot of times, they're just looking for somebody who can hang out with them. So they, you know, smoke that J with them and all that shit, you know? play spades or you know go drink and shit go to the cookout that might not be you that might not be you that's an important thing to consider you know if they ain't you fine that's you gonna have a little bit of trouble cause see here's the thing you gotta say when you reading a woman not just where she at but how receptive is she gonna be to you like, using the bougie girl example again, if you look like you that type who go to fancy restaurants, you got kind of that look, 
like you go to fancy restaurants, you live a higher type of lifestyle, she gonna be more receptive. If you looking like you, you know, more down to earth, you looking more working class, hands dirty and shit, she might not be as receptive. Because one of the mistakes uh, a lot of guys make, even some uh, so-called teachers, guys teaching game, they don't really be talking about class or the differences between women. I'm just going to say that. It's like woman, 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 but it depends. And then it depends on where you at. Which city you living in. What kind of women are in that area? Like, I'm outside of Baltimore now. But there's a big difference between women in the Baltimore area and then women in the D.C. area, even though they're only about 40 miles apart. You got to be a little bit rougher with the Baltimore women, but you got to be a little bit more suave with the D.C. women. And you got to be able to read a woman to decide which one. Because one thing, too, about a true player, a true player can adapt to different situations. Because you might have to have that different conversation. Even in situations where you might see, uh, you know, there's something in line. Even in situations, you might see a guy who might be more blue collar uh, or, uh, and a woman is more upper middle class, like in the office fuck file. You know, they might be shit, a bunch of the higher class women might be fucking a profession, might be fucking an office guy, but it ain't because he an office guy, even that he's sexy. There's a point he gotta be able to talk to him. He gotta talk to him in that language and stuff. You see, that's the key too. It's like, all right, you reading a woman, how you approach it? You approach it like, hey, Ma, how you doing? Or you be like, hey, how you doing? I'm, you know, I'm so and so. What school you go to? Uh, you know, all that bullshit. It's, it's it's some differences, but that's the player thing. The player is gonna read that woman and say, okay, what can I do? And then read her say what he's not gonna do. Let me use a lower class woman. Like some players might be like, you know what? I ain't she ratchet? Uh, nah, she ratchet. Look at. It. Look at how she fixed her hair. Look at how she talking. Look at her body language and everything. I wouldn't mess with her. You know? Then you see that other one. She looking more put together, more professional. You might say, okay, her. Or just middle class, more down to earth. Okay, her. It all depends. It really all depends. That And that's the key, though. That's the key. Because one of the keys, too, is just knowing having social intelligence, social IQ. And all that is, is just knowing the society, the environment that you're living in or that you're in, that you're operating in. What type of women are in that environment? How they respond? What they talking about? Like I used the D.C. and Baltimore example. Like I said, you're dealing with Baltimore women, you got to be a little bit more rougher with them. Basically, you just, you just got to be straight up. But you got to be on a such smooth thing. You know, you gotta be on some smooth thing with uh, the DC one. And I noticed they going to different cities and stuff. I noticed they going to different cities. Out in San Diego and stuff, you, you can be more chilled out there. You can be way more chilled. Just, hey, how you doing and stuff. You know, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure about Atlanta. When I was going down there a lot, I was still married. And then when I went down there a couple, t let's just say my I was occupied a few times. <laughs> when I was there one time and just another time, eh, we were someplace. I was just like, nah, this ain't me. These women ain't me. It was a self improvement summit. Went to this uh, this club and everything. I just said most of these women ain't me. It is what it is. But it's wherever you at. You know, that's an important consideration and everything. But you got to read them, though. And, okay, somebody would say, well, how do I read them? You got to get out and interact with the women. You got to pay attention to every little thing. Like, every single, every, every single time you interact with a woman, take something from them. Every single, and when I say interact, not just look at them and stuff, but say hi and everything. Part of what I, what I always say, go out and say hi to at least three different women, right? Go and say hi to three different women and everything. 
and that's important but you also learning something which women going to talk to you you know pay attention you know when you when you get a chance when you can observe women pay attention how are they dressed how are they dressed what kind of car are they driving you know how are they speaking pay attention to everything like when you can't talk to them when you can talk to them okay what's their speech intonation are they talking like they're educated or they talking, you know, like they haven't set foot in a school. Or they talking like some hood or trailer park gib gibberish or something like that. You know, pay attention. Are they walking around kind of with a free smile? Like they got the freedom. Like you have a lot of women, they walk around and they have a certain freedom in how they do stuff. So you got to pay attention to that. You got to pay attention to that. Or... Do they have a hard speech intonation? They looking around, you know. Like I say, you deal with lower class women, you gotta be pretty much straight up with them. You can't beat around the bush because then you look like a mark. Because you get some of those like lower class ones and you know, you don't know what you're dealing with. All of a sudden she'll have you paying, you know, she'll have you paying the rental for some little shit. Then they tend to have menial, uh, they tend to have menial needs anyway. Shout out to Rick Nasheed, he had talked about it, said they might just want some uh, Cheetos and some Sunny Delight or something, you know. But they'll try to hit you up, maybe money for cigarettes, and if they can go further. Or they'll start off with something small and see what you do. But that's when they see you as a mark. They see you, if they find you sexy or something, you probably hit right away. But then you don't want to deal with it because especially a younger one, I mean a uh, more poor one, depending on where you at, they might see a come up. Because getting another kid, you know, of course they ain't tell you about the kid they already had, the two they already had, but two different fathers. Well, actually three different fathers because there's a question about one of the kids. They don't tell you about that because they might see it as a come up. But then if you deal with a woman more of a class, like when you're talking with her and everything, you know, she's looking for somebody who more fit into that class. Not only is she looking for somebody who fit into that class, somebody she can take out with her. Well, it's her. I'm going to tell you what, with them too, you don't have to worry about the pregnancy trap as much, as, as much with them. You're not as much. So they, they'll make sure you keep a condom. They'll probably be on a pill and use either a pill or one of the other 30, 31 uh, birth control methods. Shit, they really trying to do something. But you gotta learn to read that. The only way to learn it, you gotta be out there. But even before then, you gotta be honest with who you are. You got to be honest, like what class you fit in and where you fit, what class, subculture, whatever. And then what kind, you got to know yourself. Because the trick with women is they will always look for somebody, no matter who you are, they look for somebody for their word. Now, you might have to be enough to like have a world that they want to come into. But, you know. Even then, you gotta have something so they wanna shift it, but they still gotta be able to relate to you. That's important. That's why they usually stay in their world. As far as hypergamy, like the technical term for hypergamy is a woman who moves up. But only very attractive women can move classes through their vagina. Only very attractive ones. The rest, yeah, they pretty much stay in their class, but they'll look for good guys in their class, somebody they can relate to. But once you understand, once you start learning how to read the women, and like I said, it's only you got to observe and you got to be around them. You got to take note of every interaction with them. Take note of every interaction with them. That's how you got to be. Because if you don't, well, you know. And plus, you want to read them too. Because the more you know how to read them, the less likelihood you got to get played. Because you can read, you can you can you can spot a uh, grifter type or gold digger or whatever, like a mile away. 
But it take and it takes practice. It ain't something you're gonna read in the book. Some dudes be like, "Is there a book that tell you? Ain't no book's gonna tell you." Even this video, I'm just introducing it to you. Most you can do is get out there and interact. That's the most you can do. Now you can't do anything else. You can't. You can't be on some bullshit. You gotta figure out. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. This is what I'm gonna do. This particular one. So, anyway. That's it, y'all. That's all I got for now. Like I said, yesterday was a little bit longer. But I said, you know, I'm about, <clears throat> I'm about 90% where I'm supposed to be. I still got to build my strength, though. I'm, I'm still got to build my strength. So anyway, that's all I got for now, y'all. I'll get back with y'all, all right? And if I seem a little chill, shit, brother, been working out. Man, it ain't like it used to be. I gotta build it back up where I can do that hard workout and then be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. I get back with y'all. Peace and blessings.